the skilled cast of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory embarked on various paths after the 1971 movie, achieving different levels of success. The film tells the story of a poor boy named Charlie Bucket who experiences the adventure of a lifetime after winning the chance to tour Willy Wonka's renowned chocolate factory alongside four other children. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory garnered acclaim from critics and is hailed as one of the greatest musical films ever made. Despite being famously disowned by Roald Dahl, the movie managed to breathe new life into the story of Willy Wonka and Charlie Bucket, largely due to its exceptional cast. These actors have since matured and moved forward in their lives after their roles in this musical production, yet Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory remains a significant part of their legacies nonetheless. All right, let's get started. Jack Albertson as Grandpa Joe. When Charlie discovers the golden ticket, it's his Grandpa Joe who joins him on the tour of the Chocolate Factory. Grandpa Joe educates Charlie about the enigmatic Wonka, and together they explore the intricacies of the Chocolate Factory. The character was portrayed by renowned actor Jack Albertson in one of his last roles. Albertson appeared in numerous television series, including Hey, Genie, alongside Genie Carson, the Western series Frontier Doctor with Rex Allen, Rod Cameron's crime drama State Trooper, and the drama series Bus Stop from 1961 to 1962. He made guest appearances on the crime drama series Richard Demon, Private Detective, starring David Jansen. Already an esteemed actor, Albertson had starred in films like The Subject Was Roses and Justine, and was among the select few to achieve the Triple Crown of Acting, winning a Tony, Emmy, and Oscar. Following his role in this film, Albertson featured in The Poseidon Adventure and Chico and the Man. His final acting role was in the TV movie Terror of Alcatraz, before he passed away in 1981 at the age of 74. Roy Kinnear as Mr. Salt. Mr. Henry Salt portrays Veruca's father in the 1971 classic Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, portrayed by the late Roy Kinnear. Kinnear's journey in acting commenced in 1955, debuting as Albert in The Young in Heart at the Newquay Repertory Theater. By 1959, he had become a member of Joan Littlewood's theater workshop at the Theater Royal Stratford East, appearing in both the 1960 stage production and the 1963 film adaptation of Sparrows Can't Sing. Throughout his career, Kinnear graced numerous films and television series, including Help, Till Death Us Do Part, Doctor at Large, Man About the House, George and Mildred, The Dick Emery Show, portraying Gaylord's patient father, and featured in four episodes of The Avengers. He took the lead in Cowboys, a sitcom centered around builders. His most notable collaborations were with director and close friend Richard Lester, including Help, A Funny Thing Happened. On the way to the forum, How I Won the War, The Bed's Sitting Room, Juggernaut, and the Musketeer series spanning the 1970s and 1980s. Kinnear tied the knot with actress Carmel Cryan, and they shared three children, among them actor Rory and casting director Kirsty. Their eldest daughter, Karina, faced challenges with paralysis and profound learning disabilities. Sadly, she passed away in May 2020. Tragically, on September 19, 1988, Kinnear suffered a fall from a horse while filming The Return of the Musketeers in Toledo, Spain, resulting in a broken pelvis and internal injuries. Despite being rushed to a hospital in Madrid, he succumbed to a heart attack the following day due to the severity of his injuries. He was 54 years old. Nora Denny as Mrs. TV Doris TV is a figure from Roald Dahl's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. She plays the role of Mike TV's mother, the parent of one of the disagreeable children who discovers a golden ticket and earns a tour of Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Her entertainment career commenced in Kansas City, where she was recruited by the local television station Channel 5, KCMO-TV, to portray Marilyn the Witch, serving as an on-screen host for horror films. 
She appeared in numerous television programs, including Green Acres, Petticoat Junction, Bewitched, Heart to Heart, Get Smart, Room 222, and That Girl. She was wedded to Alan Denny, an art director and illustrator for Hallmark greeting cards. While raising their two sons, Dix and John, who later founded the Los Angeles-based punk rock band The Weirdos, she pursued a career as a character actress in film and television. Denny passed away from cancer on November 20, 2005, at the age of 78. Paris Themen as Mike TV. Paris Themen portrays Mike TV in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Taking a break from acting at 14 to simply enjoy childhood, Themen later earned a BFA in theater from New York University. He established Access International, a travel service arranging charter flights to Europe for backpackers. After brief endeavors in real estate, film production, commercial casting, business representation at Walt Disney Imagineering, and other pursuits, he now signs autographs at film conventions, operates a photography business, and occasionally appears in commercials, theatrical productions, and television programs. On January 23, 2015, Themen featured on Ken Reed's TV Guidance Counselor podcast, recorded live in Wilmington, Massachusetts during Northeast Comic Con. He competed on Jeopardy! on March 13, 2018, finishing as the runner-up. His spouse, Nikki Grillos, previously appeared on the show in 2015, winning twice before being defeated in her third appearance. Themen has been married to Nikki Grillos since 2014. The couple presently resides in Los Angeles, California. The men's sister, Allegra. The men, Pigot, 1967-2019, pursued a career as a coloratura soprano, opera singer, and music therapist. His sister, Tanya, is wedded to voice actress and voice director Susan Blue. Michael Bolner as Augustus Gloop. The greedy Augustus Gloop, infamous for his mishap in The Chocolate Pipe, was portrayed by German actor Michael Bolner. The actor later confessed to facing difficulties during filming due to his limited proficiency in the English language at the time, which hindered his ability to socialize with his fellow cast members. Similar to his colleague Peter Ostrom, Bolner's role in Willy Wonka marks his sole venture into film acting. Initially aspiring to pursue further acting opportunities after the movie, Bolner's father insisted he return to school to complete his education. Presently, he works as a tax accountant and manages his own accounting firm in Munich, Germany. Alongside his fellow cast members, Bolner frequently participates in fan conventions dedicated to the beloved Willy Wonka film, delighting in sharing anecdotes from his time on set during reunions for Willy Wonka and The Chocolate Factory. To this day, Bellner has not undertaken any film roles beyond Willy Wonka. His most recent appearance was as himself in a television program titled Unusual Broadcasts from the Bermuda Triangle, which aired in 2015. In 2023, following the removal of the term chubby to describe Augustus Gloop in the Roald Dahl novel Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, upon which Willy Wonka was based, Bolner publicly defended the original text and criticized the alteration as unnecessary. Diana Saula as Mrs. Bucket Diana Sowell portrays Mrs. Bucket in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. Sowell also lent her voice to Agatha and various other characters in the 2008 video game Fallout 3. Saul was a frequent performer in the enduring production Sheer Madness at the Kennedy Center, where she took on the role of socialite Eleanor Schubert. Her final known performance was in May-June 2013. In mid-2012, Saul appeared in a staging of Love Letters alongside actor Larry Storch in Farmville, Virginia, as part of a fundraiser for the Tom Mix Rangers. For around 20 years beginning in 1960, Sol resided in Germany and maintained other residences, including one in Maryland, situated in the Washington, D.C. vicinity. She was a mother of two and a grandmother of four. Sol's spouse, Bill, was employed by the CIA and passed away in 2013. 
Seoul dedicated nearly 25 years to running a complementary tutoring program for disadvantaged children in Washington, D.C. She passed away from natural causes on October 19, 2018, at the age of 88. David Batley as Mr. Turkentine. Mr. Turkentine is the instructor of Charlie Bucket in the 1971 rendition of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. He is portrayed by David Batley and does not make an appearance in the 2005 version. Batley delivered his lines with a dry, ironic tone, both on television and in films. He secured consistent roles as a character actor and comedic sidekick. Batley's television credits include the satirical program BBC3 and the military police series Red Cap during the 1960s, as well as Eric Sykes's BBC sitcom, the 1975 television adaptation of Maul Flanders, the 1977 Christmas special of The Good Life, and later appearances in The Bill, Lovejoy, The Bider Becca Tapes as John the Laidback Barman and Mr. Bean. Batley also took on the role of the executioner in the 1966 BBC rendition of Alice in Wonderland. Additionally, he served as a foil to Eric Idle in the BBC series Rutland Weekend Television, 1975-1976. While Batley portrayed the Paul McCartney character in the original RWT sketch of The Ruttles, a parody of The Beatles, he did not feature in the American television film All You Need Is Cash, which was based on the sketch. Batley was the father of two daughters, Zoe S. Batley and E. Martha Batley. He passed away on January 20, 2003, following a heart attack at the age of 67 in Epsom, Surrey, England. Ursula Reet as Mrs. Gloop Mrs. Gloop is portrayed as Augustus's mother in the 1971 rendition of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. The role is played by Ursula Reet. Mrs. Gloop accompanies Augustus on his journey into the factory. Reet's acting career primarily consisted of appearances on German television from 1965 to 1992, at which point she retired from acting. Following her retirement, Reet withdrew from public life. Reports suggest that she passed away in 1998 due to natural causes, although specific details about her death and personal background remain undisclosed. Julie Dawn Cole as Veruca Salt Veruca Salt is the second discoverer of a golden ticket. Veruca, an English girl, is consistently indulged by her father, Mr. Salt. Shortly after completing filming, Cole secured a recurring role in the ITV sitcom And Mother Makes Three, portraying Arabella, a conceited and snobbish teenage girl. Following the sitcom's success, Cole received numerous job offers. Between 1971 and 1974, she appeared in several TV series, often portraying antagonistic characters. She portrayed a troublemaker who burgled a house in an episode of the ITV series Saturday Night Theater and a juvenile delinquent in an episode of the prison drama series Within These Walls. Occasionally, she assumed different roles, such as playing a murder, victim in an episode of Orson Welles' Great Mysteria's series. In 2004, Cole made a guest appearance in a Melbourne comedy festival production titled Willy Wonka Explained the search for Veruca Salt. This paved the way for Cole's co-starring role in the 2010 Edinburgh Fringe production, Willy Wonka Revisited, The Veruca Salt Sessions, where she portrayed a partially fictionalized version of herself discussing Veruca, life, and devoted fans with her unseen therapist, while her co-star depicted an Australian admirer describing his fixation with Veruca to his unseen therapist. In 2016, Cole published the memoir, I Want It Now, detailing her experiences filming Willy Wonka. Cole met actor Nick Wilton in 1988, during the revival of the Whitehall play Dry Rot. They wed in 1991 and share two children. Their marriage ended in divorce in 2002. Peter Capel as the Tinker. The Tinker is a minor character featured in the 1971 adaptation of Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. In addition to an extensive film career, 
He made appearances in numerous television series and miniseries. He also had roles in various classic radio programs, including the Dimension X series. His acting debut occurred in Winterset, shortly after the conclusion of World War II. His final performance took place a year before his passing, appearing in Mama's Geburtstag, both of which were television productions. Capel also starred in Stanley Kubrick's 1957 war film, Paths of Glory, where he narrated the film's opening sequence alongside Kirk Douglas. Capel passed away in Munich, West Germany, on March 3, 1986, at the age of 73. No specific cause of death was disclosed. Leonard Stone as Mr. Beauregarde. Samuel Sam Beauregarde is a minor antagonist in Roald Dahl's Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. He is the faither of Violet Beauregarde, one of the children who discovers a golden ticket and earns a tour of Willy Wonka's Chocolate Factory. Rock commenced his career as a young actor studying at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art in London. He performed in the West End on Broadway and toured globally. He journeyed for eight years in Australia and New Zealand with the musical South Pacific. In 1959, he earned the Tony Award for Best Supporting Actor in Redhead, a Bob Foss musical. He also featured in the Tony Award-nominated cast of Look Homeward, Angel, in 1957, which debuted at the Ethel Barrymore Theater in New York. The production, based on the Thomas Wolfe novel, clinched the Pulitzer Prize. Rock portrayed Farnham the Great in two episodes of Lost in Space, 1965-1968. He made two appearances on The Donna Reed Show, portraying Mr. Tressel in The Good Guys and the Bad Guys, 1961, and Harlan Carmody, Jr., in Joe College, 1965. During the 1965-1966 season, he played Doc Joslin on Camp Runamuck. In 1967, he assumed the role of Judge Gilroy in Cimarron Strip. In 1971, Rock starred as Tom Wagner on The Men from Shiloh, renamed for The Virginian, in the episode titled The Town Killer. Rock passed away on November 2, 2011, in Encinitas, California, after battling a brief bout with cancer just one day before his 88th birthday. Peter Ostrom as Charlie Bucket. Peter Ostrom was merely 12 years old when he secured the part of young Charlie Bucket, whose existence takes a transformative turn upon discovering a golden ticket to Wonka's Chocolaty factory. He fostered a close relationship with Jane Witter during filming and spoke fondly of the actor following his passing in 2016. Despite receiving offers for further film roles after the movie, Ostrom ultimately opted not to pursue a career in acting. Instead, driven by a passion for horses, Ostrom enrolled in the Cornell University College of Veterinary Medicine and pursued a career as a veterinarian. For a significant period, Ostrom refrained from discussing his portrayal of Charlie Bucket, but in later years, he has embraced his affection for the film. In interviews, he has shared positive anecdotes about his time on set. Presently residing in New York, Ostrom most recently engaged in a video series titled Veterinarians on Call, aiming to showcase the endeavors of veterinarians. Additionally, he has participated in reunions with his fellow child actors from Willy Wonka, Denise Nickerson as Violet Beauregard. Unlike her fellow actors Peter Ostrom and Julie Dawn Cole, Denise Nickerson had prior acting experience before stepping into the role of gum-chewing champion Violet Beauregard. Before joining the film, she held recurring roles in the television series Dark Shadows and continued to pursue opportunities in both cinema and television following her portrayal of Violet in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. She later appeared in The Electric Company and made guest appearances in The Brady Bunch and The Wonderful World of Disney. Denise was married twice. Her first marriage was to Rick Keller in 1981. Tragically, he passed away two years later due to a brain aneurysm. Her second marriage was to Mark Willard in 1995. They welcomed a son, Joshua Nickerson, before divorcing in 1998. In 1976, Nickerson was struck by a car while crossing the street, resulting in her being in a full leg cast for eight months.
Following her acting career, Denise Nickerson retired at the age of 21 and later pursued work as a doctor's receptionist and office manager. In her later years, she actively participated in numerous fan conventions dedicated to both Willy Wonka and Dark Shadows. Denise Nickerson passed away in 2019 at the age of 62. Gene Wilder as Willy Wonka. Arguably one of the standout roles in Gene Wilder's illustrious career, Willy Wonka was brought to vivid life through a captivating portrayal by the actor. Wilder had showcased his talent both on stage and on screen prior to this role, but it was his performance in this movie that firmly established him as a masterful actor. His rendition of the song Pure Imagination in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is hailed as one of the most iconic songs in cinematic history, having been referenced and covered by numerous artists in the years following the film's release. Following Willy Wonka, Wilder continued to grace the silver screen in films such as Silver Streak and Blazing Saddles, and earned an Oscar nod for Best Adapted Screenplay for his work on the script of Young Frankenstein. He was also deeply committed to cancer awareness initiatives, particularly following the passing of his third spouse, Gilda Radner, in 1989. Wilder crossed paths with his first spouse, Mary Mercier, while studying at the HB studio in New York. Despite their brief courtship, they tied the knot on July 22, 1960. However, the couple spent significant periods of time apart, leading to their eventual divorce in 1965. Shortly thereafter, Wilder embarked on a relationship with Mary Joan Schutz, a close friend of his sister. Schutz was a mother to Catherine from a previous marriage. When Catherine began referring to Wilder as Dad, he made the decision to marry Schutz on October 27, 1967, and formally adopted Catherine that same year. Retiring from acting in 2005, Wilder transitioned to writing, penning six books before he passed away in 2016 at the age of 83. We've seen the actors have taken diverse paths since their roles in these beloved films. Some have continued to shine in the spotlight, while others have transitioned to different careers or chosen to step away from the limelight altogether. Yet the impact of their contributions to cinematic history remains undeniable. Whether you're a fan of the classic version or eagerly awaiting the release of the 2024 adaptation, one thing is certain. Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory will continue to captivate audiences for years to come, reminding us all of the power of imagination, the importance of kindness, and the joy of a sweet adventure.